Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about how to run Databricks notebook using Azure Data Factory activity with input parameter. In my previous video also, I explained how to schedule Databricks notebook in Azure Data Factory but without input parameter. In order to execute Databricks notebook using input parameter, first we need to create input parameter in our Databricks notebook. How we can create input parameter in Databricks? There is a concept of widget. Using widget, we can create input parameters in Databricks notebook. There are different types of widgets. Text box, drop down box, combo box. Coming to text box, it's a free text. We can write anything and we can pass that as the input value. Coming to drop down, it will have listed uh, you know, pre-populated values. We have to choose one among them. Coming to combo box, it's a similar to drop down. It will have list of values, but at the same time, we can choose multiple values as input. These are the basic differences. And I will post another video about uh, input widgets with more information. In this video, let us understand using widget, we can create input parameters in Databricks notebook. Let's get started with the demo. I have logged into my Databricks environment and cluster is up and running. In this uh, video also, I am going to use the simple uh, use case you know, which I uh, used in my previous video, which means this notebook will uh, connect to Azure SQL database. It will read one of the table and based on that output, it will write, the, write it into ADLS location. That is very simple requirement. So in this uh, step, using JDBC connection uh, definition, you know, we are creating JDBC URL. In the next step, using Spark Data Frame Reader, we are uh, reading one of the table that is employee, dbo.employee. Uh, this table is already present in my, in my Azure SQL database. It's having only two columns and one record. Now, this data will be uh, read by this data frame. And in the next step, I have to write the output into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, we have to create mount point in case uh, we haven't created already. In this case, I have already created mount point for my Azure Data Lake Storage, which is ADLS Raja DE demo. Within that, I have created one container demo. For that, I have already created mount point. That's the reason I have commented out. Now, in the next step, we have to write the data frame output into Azure Data Lake Storage. For that, using data frame writer, now I am writing the path. For that, I am creating a new folder, employee output which is appended by uh, current timestamp. So uh, every time it will create a unique folder within that it will write, uh, it will create the output uh, files. It's a very simple architecture, but uh, the thing is here in this um, uh, example, I have hard coded my table name. So this particular pipeline will always process only one table that is employee. But in real time, now we uh, might need to process different tables. So for that, what I'm going to do is this Databricks notebook should accept one input parameter that is table name and based on the incoming table name, it should process that table. That is my requirement. I should not hard code employee table here. Then what we can do for that, we have to create widget. So in order to create a widget, the syntax is dbutils dot widgets, then type of the widget. In this case, I am going with text box. Then within that, we have to give name for that text box, then uh, the default value. In this case, I am not going with any default value, so it will be empty. So let me execute this step. It's one time activity. Let me execute. The execution is successful. Then you can notice here, you know, it has created one input box. This is uh, this is named table. This is a one time activity. So once we have created, we can comment it out. It's not needed anymore. Now the input parameter is created for our uh, notebook. Then the next step, whatever the value uh, given to this uh, parameter uh, by the user who is executing this notebook, that value should be collected into one of the variable. For that, I'm using uh, the DB utility function, DB utils dot widgets dot get. While setting up, it would be text. While receiving the value, it would be get. That is the only difference. And within that, we have to give the name of that input box, name of the widget. That is table in this case. Right, so whatever the value we are giving here, that will come and sit in this variable. So currently it's empty. Let me execute this step. It's empty. Now let me give some test value. And um, let me execute this step. 
here we can see test value so whatever the value we are giving here that will come and sit in this variable now uh, when we execute this pipeline uh, through azure data factory i will pass table name that value will come and sit here then finally it will go to the variable then this table name i can give it to data frame reader instead of hard coding what i will do is i will uh, give that variable so dynamically whatever the table name we are passing that will come and sit here then uh, employee data frame will be created based on that then we that value can be written into azure data lake storage hope you understood now we have created uh, the input parameter in uh, azure data factory uh, data brick side now let us do the same in azure data uh, factory side as well this is my data factory environment within that i am going to call data databricks notebook so for that i have to use notebook activity that is within databricks so i have to select notebook but i have already uh, created that activity so i can give any name but i am going with the default name notebook one then we have to choose the linked service linked service is nothing but you know that is the connection uh, connection point based on uh, which azure data factory can uh, connect to azure data bricks so i have already created linked services so that is pointing to my data bricks environment so let me check the connection it's a successful now in the next step i have to choose the notebook which i have to execute so for that i have to use a browse so i am browsing i am going to users then i am choosing the right um, uh, notebook this is our notebook adf trigger with input parameter this one so let me uh, choose that then this particular um, uh, notebook is accepting some input parameter so for that i have to go with base parameter here i have already created that base parameter so i am giving some name table then within that we have to give some value even we can hard code here i can give even i can give uh, dbo dot uh, emp i can give then it will work but instead of uh, hard coding here also what i am doing is i am uh, going with some uh, uh, parameter that this parameter is um, more specific to adf concept so whenever we are creating a adf notebook uh, adf pipeline we can uh, set up uh, something called parameter so here i am giving table name it's a string type and default value i am not giving anything which means whenever i am executing it will uh, demand uh, the input from the user then we have to input it could be dbo.employee or any other table then this uh, uh, this parameter will go and sit in this uh, uh, in this uh, databricks notebook input parameter so this is how you know we are passing the parameter to databricks notebook once we have uh, sent the value from here it will call the notebook and the value that was passed there it will come and sit here then finally from here it will go to table name using widgets dot get then using this table name the data frame will be created then that will be written to adls i hope you understood the entire flow you can connect all the dots right now the setup is done now i have to test my pipeline is working or not for that as i told in my previous video we can create a trigger or we can create debug so debug is more suitable for development mode a uh, trigger is more more suitable for uh, production uh, scheduling in this uh, case i am going with uh, debug it's one time execution but uh, this pipeline uh, it's a parameterized one so it will uh, ask parameter from me while executing so let me execute it is asking the parameter table name so let me give dbo.emp so this is the value i'm giving here so basically this value will be passed to this widget and uh, that will be given to this this uh, this place while reading the data frame so i have uh, given the input let me give okay then the execution starts we can see the execution is in progress let it complete the execution is successful now data is um, uh, read from uh, azure sql and it is written to azure data lake storage using databricks notebook and that databricks notebook is called from adf activity let me get into my data lake storage and let's see the output refresh and i am able to see the output uh, this is how we can pass input parameter to azure databricks notebook from azure data factory 
I hope you understood the concept. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment in the channel. Also, please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button to get the latest updates on Databricks development tips. Thank you.